Hey guys, so I finally had some time to put together another fine art piece to share with you guys. I had been trying to be better about doing video recordings of the actual shooting of it, but I kind of forgot when I was doing this one. And, um, but I'm still super happy with how the final image came out and I thought you guys would like to see it, especially since it's been a while since I've had time to share one of these with you. Um, so this image is a Rainbow Baby fine art piece. You guys probably have figured out by now how much I love getting to create something special for my families who have struggled to go grow their families or gone through a loss. And so creating these special fine art images to kind of capture their story in a unique way means a lot to me and I hope to them as well. So this image was created for one of my good friends who um, very um, sadly, there's there's not words, who, who lost her son. And you know, that's a, a huge, horrible heartbreak all in and of itself um, to, to lose a baby during pregnancy and you know all the questions and, and and heartbreak that goes along with it and so um, with this piece I wanted to create something that kind of showcased that that celebrated the loss of Brantley in the glory of their baby girl and so the idea for this image was you know obviously the rainbow skirt for a rainbow baby but also um, the Holy Spirit or her angel baby up in heaven blessing their family with this little girl. So I hope that you enjoy the walkthrough that I'm going to do for you guys now of how I created this piece. So this is the final piece and I'm going to take you step by step walking you through the process of how I made it in Photoshop. So this is the original image. <laughs> You can see that a lot of work had to be done to get it where I wanted it. I knew that um, we were going to be using my rainbow skirt. Um, I love this skirt. I love the vibrancy of it and it's beautiful and flowing and I've done a lot of different things with it before. But I had this vision in my head for Courtney's piece of um, I know the prayer and um, hope and faith that went into the journey for them having this sweet miracle baby girl and so my um, brain had envisioned her in a posture of prayer so kneeling and either looking up to the heavens in gratitude to God or looking down joyfully at her growing tummy and so I wanted her to be the brightest most vibrant thing in the image you know that idea of overcoming the darkness of having lost her son and coming into the vibrant beautiful light that is um, her the, the upcoming birth of her daughter um, obviously the sadness of losing her son isn't going away but the joy of having a successful pregnancy is definitely something to be celebrated and something to give thanks to God for so um, that's why I chose a backdrop that was this charcoal color and a uh, flooring that matched. So um, what you'll notice is this backdrop is a paper backdrop. It's actually um, supposed to look like a chalkboard. <laughs> and this is the backside of one of my Flacati rugs. Um, well, it's not a rug. It's a piece of carpet or fabric. Um, but they, they were very similar in tone, so I knew that I'd be able to mesh them together really easily in Photoshop, which is why I chose them. And then we just got Courtney sat down on it and spread the, the skirt around her. Now, obviously, the skirt is wider than the fabric, so that's something that I'd have to accommodate for. Um, and the space is a little challenging. It's not, I, my ceilings are much lower than in my old studio, so um, it's a little limiting. So we, we did our best and we made it work. So in order to fill the backdrop and the floor so that it's all that, moody black gray color the first thing I did was and you'll see it in this later I stretched the floor because that's the easiest place to start so what I did was I took the clone stamp tool and I cloned it all down and I cloned it to the sides and where I couldn't clone it I um, I did a little bit of stretching in some places, not much though, because there is a grain to this fabric and if you stretch, it warps the directionality and can create issues there. 
Um, so I just did some subtle things to try and blend it all together. You'll see it's not perfect, but in the finished product, we're able to get it to where it's more seamless. So that was how we, we started with the floors. And then the second step would be to stretch the background. Now, like I said, this is a chalkboard print background that I have on a paper backdrop. And I have photographed that backdrop by itself with no subject on it. So I simply took that photographed image and dropped it in behind her. There is a light spark, light spark, a light part to that backdrop. So I centered the lighter part around her so that it created a kind of vignette. Um, which is something I always like. I like to add directionality of light to my images. And then I used a mask tool to mask that backdrop, backdrop image off of her and the skirt so that it was only a backdrop and not covering any of the image. So to give you context, there's my layer mask. And you can see, as I said, I masked it off of her and some of the original background behind her. Um, because I liked how bright this spot was, and I lost some of that on the original uh, blank slate of the backdrop. So that's how I stretched the background. And you can see doing that alone makes a huge difference in the way this image looks. Obviously, we're gonna polish it up a lot more than that. So that was my step one. Once I get that the way I want it, I always save that as a flattened, as a PSD, and then save it as a flattened file and then I open up the flattened file. So this is my flattened file. Um, hold on. So with my flattened file, this is actually not the original flattened file. <laughs> Say that six times fast. This is the original flattened file. See, I saved so many files. Okay. So let's work our way backwards. Okay, so this is the original. And I'll show you the side by side so you can see that they're exactly the same. First one, second one, nothing's different here. So let's minimize this first one. We're looking at my second one. Okay, the first thing I did is run my typical processing um, action. And what you'll notice that does is it warms it up and it brightens up my shadows a little bit. My second layer, I just refined some edges and then I added my retouching layer to smooth out um, any subtle little things. Then I added a curves layer. Okay, so for those who are interested in curves layers, what you'll notice is I kind of brought down some of my highlights here and my midtones to darken it a little bit, which seems counterproductive since I used my original action to bring up the shadows, um, but it adds a little bit of moodiness here and will correct some of those shadows we don't like later. I also added a levels layer and this adds some contrast. So you'll see I brought my highlights, made my highlights brighter and some of my shadows darker. And it's a very, very minimal thing, but it does make a difference. And then this is my, this is an action I've purchased that you can use to paint light back into areas. And I just use that on her face. So you can see right there, it just gets rid of some of those shadows. So her face becomes a little brighter than it was originally. I also like to add more directional light. So I did some vignetting. Now this isn't quite directional. It is a genuine vignette. But like I said, I wanted her to feel centrally focused and that there was like this darkness all around her. So that's why I chose to do this vignette. And you can see I did a significant drop to the highlights and to the midtones for this one to really emphasize that lighting focus on Courtney. And then the last thing I did for this file was I added a texture overlay. I really like adding something that's a little textural. I feel like it adds something to an image. Um, I, I obviously don't do this a lot, but in my fine art work, I really like it. Um, and I dropped the opacity down on that so it wasn't super poignant. And then I um, added a hue saturation layer. And what I did with this was I eliminated the color tone to that overlay completely and made it a grayscale. But I also darkened it so it kind of minimized its potency because the contrast in the original texture file was brought down by darkening it. Okay, so there's the second file. 
that I then flattened and we move on to our third file which is this one okay so the last thing I wanted to do was um I wanted I had this idea of the idea that um her son who passed away Brantley was the one who chose this little baby girl for their family and so I kind of wanted to do something to reflect that you know that God and Brantley blessed their family with this this little girl and I thought well it made me think of Holy Spirit and we often see Holy Spirit reflected in flames or smoke so I chose to go with like a smoke idea so it's kind of airy and wispy and this was the the smoke layer that I had um, this is another file that I've purchased from somewhere else because um, I don't know that I would be super adept at creating this kind of an overlay and this is like perfect I liked that it kind of gave the idea of maybe a mother and child in this shape here a little bit um, but mostly I just liked the the feeling the movement it gave and I don't know it just felt very I don't know perfect for this so um, I did that um, and then you can see you can see clearly where the lines of this overlay are so we needed to fix that so I started with brightness and you can see just using that brightness and contrast layer I dropped it down significantly in the brightness and that greatly hid that line in the overlay I also added a levels layer and you'll see that I brought down our highlights so I made them my highlights brighter and the shadows darker and what that does is just add greater emphasis on these wispy lines so here's without here's with I just didn't want it to disappear entirely so there's that then because it's a rainbow baby I wanted to kind of put a little bit of a rainbow tone in that smoke I didn't want it to be super obvious just like a subtle hint and I wanted the colors of the rainbow to match the lines of the skirt. So you'll see blues kind of up here in the top where this blue is. And there's more reds down here by the red in her skirt. And then I emphasized that color a little bit by upping the saturation level of it. Finally, I added a vignette. And this is a red tone vignette just to the edges. Just to, again, give a little bit more emphasis to the... Um, middle the subject so it's Courtney and the smoke um the other thing I should note I just noticed this um my vignette and my smoke layers both have masks the vignette layer is masking it off her body and face because sometimes this vignette layer adds a cast to the subject and I didn't want that to happen with this and then I did it with the smoke layer too to make sure it was very focused where I wanted it and kept it off her face so there you have it Start to finish, that is how I created Courtney's Rainbow Baby Fine Art piece. I hope you like how it turned out. I had a lot of fun creating this and adjusting to our new photo space and playing with light and colors and creating something really unique and hopefully special to this really special family. If you have questions or comments, please leave them for me. I love hearing from you guys and I will hopefully have another video for you in the near future. Bye!